Redman coming to you live from Antones in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Get up for Tony Epsclaim! Come on, Austin, this is a live podcast. People listen to hear a live audience. Can you guys make some fucking noise? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Didn't realize that we were at Antone's fucking library tonight. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Man, hey, guys, make some noise. Red Band's here, hey, everybody. Up, guys? You guys have any idea what kind of party you're at? <laughs> they are, you know, I've noticed since we've been here in Austin, they are a lot quieter than it's most very, cities. They're yeah. like very, I don't know if they're trying to not spread the coronavirus or something, <laughs> but they've ar- you guys have already had it, I promise. How many of you have had the coronavirus by round of applause? Jeez, what, what, did you just announce my name again? Did you hear the light applause there? The woo, woo. How loud can this place get for the band that's been performing for you? For a, Okay. Oh, there you go. It's a music town, I guess. Not really, not really a comedy hub just yet. That's John Dees, Matt Muling, D Madness, and Michael Gonzalez on the drums. Um, how many of you have been to Kill Tony before? How many of you, make some noise if you haven't been to Kill Tony before. Wow, very excited. People are excited that have never been here before. Isn't that interesting? Well, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun. It's a show about stand-up comedy. We meet people. We see how it goes. And, uh, yeah, things like that. We have the great Ryan J. Ebelt in Los Angeles drawing tonight's episode. He's in L.A. right now. He drew an amazing poster for Kill Tony 500 that's going to be available. He's coming out for that event. Very exciting stuff. He draws every single episode, every single road poster. All those are available at RyanJEbelt.com, including the brand new Kill Tony the Coloring Book, Selling Like Hotcakes. What kind of comedy podcast has their own coloring book? The one that you're at that you half clapped at the beginning of? <laughs> the one that you're barely excited to be at? Um... But before we start tonight's show, here's a little bit about the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode possible for you right now. Hey, y'all. Are you hiring for spring? What type of role are you hiring for? Maybe you need to hire someone to wear many hats, which can be challenging. Or you might have a simple position to fill, but it's taking forever to find someone who's a great fit for your company. That's where ZipRecruiter comes in. ZipRecruiter can help you find qualified candidates fast. And now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Kill Tony. Whether you need to hire a civil engineer in New York, a nurse in Nebraska, an attorney in Colorado, or a mascot in Missouri, ZipRecruiter's matching technology finds people with the right experience for your job and actively invites them to apply. It's so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. From account to zoologist and everything in between, ZipRecruiter makes hiring easier. And right now, you can try it for free at our only our listeners get it link, ZipRecruiter.com slash Kill Tony. If you go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Kill Tony today to try ZipRecruiter for free, we get credit for sending you. Once again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash K-I-L-L-T-O-N-Y. You know ZipRecruiter is the smartest way to hire. Mud water. Yum, yum, yum. It's a coffee alternative with four aptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. With one-seventh of caffeine as a cup of coffee, you get the energy without the anxiety, jitters, or crash of coffee. Each ingredient was added for a purpose. Cacao and chai for mood and a microdose of caffeine. Lion's mane for alertness. Cordyceps. For, to help support physical performance. Chaga and Rishi to support your immune system. Turmeric for soreness and cinnamon for antioxidants. Yeah, it's great. I drink a lot of coffee, but I always get those caffeine jitters and stuff. This doesn't give me that, and it gives me energy. I love to put a little bit of honey in there, a little lemon. It's great. Sometimes I use a little nut milk. It's delicious. Mud is 100% USDA, organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, Whole30, and kosher. Yes. Go to mudwater.com slash Tony to support the show and use the code Tony for $5 off. That's M-U-D-W-T-R dot com slash Tony. Use the code Tony. Get $5 off. Thank us later. 
You know what we absolutely love? I mean, we swear by it. Morning, noon, and night. Kill Tony Reps Liquid IV. When we push our body hard or we're just feeling run down, it's extremely important to take care of ourselves with the proper vitamins and nutrients. That is why Liquid IV created Hydration Multiplier plus immune support to maintain and strengthen your immune system. You know about this, Red Band. Yeah, I actually have a whole cupboard just for my liquid IVs. I've posted photos of this on Instagram. My favorite is the Hydration Multiplier Plus Immune Support, the Mandarin Orange one. I love it. I have one in the morning. I have one at night. I have one in the middle of the day. I probably go through a pack of these every two days, I swear. And what excites me the most about it is that the Hydration Multiplier Plus has vitamin C. It boosts your immune system. And at these times, it's the perfect thing to have. Yep. Yeah, no doubt. Vitamin C, zinc, and Wellmune in convenient single-serving packets to help strengthen your immune system. Works perfectly for me on the golf course. I can get cold bottles of water out there or put them on ice, and then you pop one of these packets in there. It works out perfectly. This way it's not sitting around all day. It's fresh. It tastes great. Everything is great about Liquid IV. Makes you look better. Makes you feel better. Liquid IV can provide two to three times more hydration than water alone, plus it tastes good. What's more boring than the flavor of water? The blend is powered by cellular transport technology, which is designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other nutrients. The optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium delivers water and key nutrients into the bloodstream faster. It's the perfect balance to help you strengthen your immune system more quickly and effectively. Plus, Liquid IV's great people. They donated 4 million plus servings in response to COVID-19. Products are being donated to hospitals, first responders, food banks, veterans, and active military. The company has donated over 10 million servings globally. Get your Liquid IV hydration multiplier plus immune support in bulk at Costco or order online and get 25% off when you do. Go to liquidiv.com and use the code TONY at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order, and you get better hydration. Do it today. Use the promo code TONY at liquidiv.com. And we're back. Are you guys ready to start tonight's show? By the way, I forgot to mention, somehow I forgot, that the band is sponsored by Fix Alkaline Vodka. Yes. Some really incredible stuff. They uh, have a uh, less acidic vodka. It's alkaline. 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 And it's distilled 10 times, and it's, uh, it's amazing. It, it gives you, if you have a lot of like heartburn when you drink or whatever, it really helps with that. And less hangover. Who, who doesn't love less hangover? So try Fix Vodka. Then plus, they support local artists like the Kill Tony Band. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on this show, we usually have an amazing guest. Today, we've uh, upped ourselves, and we've uh, had the, uh, probably the best possible fucking guest we could have in the world. A resident of Austin, Texas, everyone's favorite comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ron White, everybody! Yeah, baby! Here he is. Oh, yeah. How could we forget? That's right. Ron White has his own tequila, number one tequila, which uh, we absolutely love. Yes. And that's the name of the game right there. My part of the show is brought to you by number one tequila. <laughs> Everybody's got a different liquor sponsor here. I'm obviously a White Claw guy myself, you know what I mean? Uh, Ron, welcome back. Ron's one of the main reasons uh, why we all moved here. He's basically sold uh, Rogan on it. He sold me on it. Absolutely incredible, and we're so grateful that you did. And uh, you're an amazing guest. You've done this a few times, and we're happy to have you back. Uh, I've never done it sober, but I'm sober now. And uh, <laughs> uh, No, I'm not kidding. I quit drinking two months ago, but I still need you guys to drink this fucking tequila. <laughs> Because we lost our best customer, me. <laughs> How cool is that? How about a hand for him? Two fucking months, huh? So awesome. <laughs> I love it. And Ron, it's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> yeah. And you guys probably know if you don't, if this is your first time, maybe whoever brought you told you that how the show works. But a bunch of people sign up before the show for the opportunity to get on it. If your name gets pulled out of the bucket, you come up on this stage. There's actually a new holding cell upstairs filled with comedians right now, and people in the audience also signed up. 
But if I pull your name out of the bucket, you get 60 seconds uninterrupted on this stage. You know your time is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up or else you're going to bring out the angry Fifth Street bear. And you don't want that. There you go. There you go. There you go. It doesn't... Yep. All right. Uh, You guys ready to start the show? Again, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do what, you... What, uh, Austin, this is a real live show. Are you guys ready to start this show? It's weird. It's really oh. weird. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. I feel bad for whatever comedian has to go first in this shit storm tonight. But here we go. Let's see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, your first comedian... Goes by the name of Ben Horn. Ben Horn. So here we go. Let's see how this new tunnel system works. Here we go. Yeah. Hey, hey. Here he is, everybody. Ben Horn. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, everybody excited about these COVID restrictions getting lifted? Yeah, I'm not. I'm fucking pissed. Everything was going just fine. I didn't get sick once. Then this asshole every, opens everything back up and boom. Chlamydia. <laughs> you know? I mean, it was kind of like getting the vaccine because I didn't know I'd have to get it twice, but... Could have been worse. She could have given me something worse than chlamydia. She could have given me, like, a hand job, you know? I'll take dirty puss over a hand job any fucking day. (laughs) Pretty sure the last time I got a hand job, I was at a middle school dance. (laughs) Yeah, and I was a chaperone. So, (laughs) if you turn that into a pedophile joke, that's on you. I didn't get jerked off by a middle schooler. It was a lunch lady, which I think is worse. All right, I'm Ben Horn. Thank you very much. Ben Horn. Ben Horn, Ben Horn. Welcome. You've been on the show before, right? I have, yeah, 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 a few weeks ago. What did we talk about? What did we find out about you? What was the highlight of that interview? Uh, I was uh, Army for 10 years. I work at HEB. How about about some noise for HEB, huh? Uh, That's always a crowd favorite. Yeah, you know, they actually... Uh, so my department got shut down during the whole snowstorm Mm -hmm. and so we weren't working and they paid us for the whole fucking week regardless for all of our fucking hours which was awesome they're great man I heard they're getting some power stations put in there too in the future yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, very cool hell yeah you didn't uh, you didn't block the snow and ice from hitting that H-E-B with your thick ass (laughs) mustache (laughs) no it's I mean it's it you know, the cocaine definitely gets stuck in there from time to time. Is that true? Do you do cocaine, Ben? From time to time. When you keep saying from time to time, are we talking about all the time? I mean, if, if somebody offers it and I don't have anything to do, like, why not? And you hang out specifically with people that do cocaine? Typically, yes. Yeah. I hang out, uh, uh, ironically, a lot of people that do cocaine. What's the wildest night you ever had on cocaine? What does that look like? I, you know, I really don't get that crazy on coke. I'm more of a drinker, to be honest. I'll do a little bit of coke just because I think it's fun. And everybody smokes weed. I don't smoke weed. It makes me too anxious and What kind of drinking do you like to do? What's your preferred beverage? Oh, Lone Star. I can smash. I'll, do, I'll drink tequila for all, all day, but Lone Star is my go-to. What's your favorite kind of tequila this one obviously but, oh, clearly oh, oh. nothing better than this one tequila yeah. everybody <laughs> a real ben horn marketing genius that's what i should have named it this one <laughs> my god ben i really set you up there and uh you really knocked it right into fucking the catcher's mitt <laughs> yikes <laughs> So, Ben, what do you do at HEB exactly? I'm a personal shopper, so whenever people do, like, the online orders, I just walk around with a cart and just grab their shit and throw it in there. Mm-hmm. And this thing about chlamydia, is that true? No. No. I have had it twice, though. Okay. Really? In my life, yeah. What are the symptoms? I, I, dude, I don't honestly didn't get any symptoms. I just, when I was in the Well, when your still, dick itches all the time, you don't yeah. really notice that you have I mean, chlamydia, you know? 
So how did you know you got it? He just went to the doctor and he's like, oh, you have chlamydia again. Yeah, well, I, I've been, I've all, I've, I'm super paranoid about STDs because my dad used to, like when we were kids, used to just show us pictures of STDs to, to like scare us from having unprotected sex. And so when I was in the army and I had like access to a doctor all the time, like every few months, I'd just be like, hey, let me pee in a cup and tell me if I caught anything. Wow. And they did it. Every Makes time. you wonder how many times everyone's had chlamydia before and just never got it tested. Yeah, that's why that shit's still it's around. One of the, it's one of the silent STDs. Yeah. It's a real sneaker. Have you had any other ones? No, just the two. Yeah, sure. Come <laughs> on. Come on. Chlamydia twice, nothing else in this little fun packet of yours. And that little, uh, let me ask you this. Is there a gigantic mustache above your dick as well? You would think it would protect you from some of these <laughs> disgusting juices that are splashing all over you. I feel like that's how you get more of them. It's just more shit to, you know. Yeah, that's the eyelash for your dick. You oh, got to yeah. keep that bush going. Soaks it right in, huh? I feel like some girls should actually get a mustache shaved above their pussy so that guys know where to put their fucking face. You know what I mean? I think guy, most guys know exactly <laughs> where to put their face, actually. I'm pretty sure they don't need a target for that. It's not that confusing. I'm pretty sure the main uh, thing that guys aim for is the vagina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, like two, two and a half years. Okay. I started when I was a kid. Um, and then stopped, obviously, when I uh, joined the Army. When you and say when you were a kid, what are we talking about here? I was like 13. Wow. I started... Uh, you had already had chlamydia at that point? Right, yeah. That was the first time. Uh, no, I started at, like, Cap City in the Velveeta Room, and then uh, before long, I was able to, like, travel around Texas a little bit, do some local radio and stuff, and then um, I just... When I got out of high school, I needed something to do so i joined the military and i really thought i was going to do it for a career for a long time but then uh that didn't work out why so. didn't it work out um i just my body and brain stopped you had another discharge well. that had nothing to do with chlamydia no. <laughs> <laughs> that deserved a bigger laugh yeah. if you're wondering uh, uh, if you're wondering whether you guys are doing a good job or not not so much uh i'm doing my yeah. part but i mean i was uh i was infantry so it's just real tough on the body and mind and so uh at 10 years do you you don't have the op- like your only two options are stand for another 10 years till you retire or just get out mm-hmm. and so at that point i was like i think i'm done with this i'm pretty sure i can do something else so let me ask you well, what are your goals now with comedy do you want to keep doing it is you absolutely like- yeah when i when i first got out uh, i was in school i thought i wanted to work in government and uh, started just doing uh, open mics and stuff just for shits and giggles and then i i, I hated working in anything politically <laughs> political and uh and i love doing the open mic so i, I kind of i just dropped out of school i just got any job that i could get that was going to pay the bills and and now i just stay on stage as much as possible okay great absolutely man super likable fun set nice and tight you gotten up a couple times here on kill tony congratulations man Thanks, you got the man. show started tonight Appreciate it's it. ben horn everybody that's Thank what it looks up for like ben. he's on instagram at the ben horn he's that guy ben horn here comes Zach Bogus to switch out the microphone on this special sanitary episode of uh, Kill Tony. <laughs> you guys having any fun out there? This seems to be a real... Okay, good. Good. We're getting there. It's building up. Drinks are flowing out there. Let's see what happens next with the comedy stylings of Dan... Pyatetsky. Dan Pyatetsky. That's a name. Hell yeah, it is. Dan. Dan Pyatetsky coming down the stairway. This is very good. This new system is working. How about a hand for Antones, everybody? Allowing live shows during the pandemic. There he is. Here he is. One more time, Dan Pietetsky. Hell yeah, dude. When I was going through puberty uh, last night, one of my favorite things to do was to measure my penis, right? Like every three months, roughly, I would measure my penis. I can feel you guys pulling back right now. Let me explain something to the room. Every single guy in this room has done it before, okay? Like every three months, we would all measure my penis, right? And you're probably thinking like, too often, why th- every three months? I didn't do it the normal way, right? Like I didn't use a tape measure or a meter stick, you know. Instead, I used my penis, dude, as the unit of measure to measure other things. And that might seem even crazier, but how else would I have known that my dad's pillow 
is exactly nine dicks long, right? <laughs> Found that out one day when he went out for a glass of gelato. Hell yeah. Measured everything. My brother's toothbrush, about a dick and a half. Our living room television, that was a 17-dick TV, yeah. I remember, this was middle school, dude. <laughs> and my friend Kevin was like, Dan, I guarantee I have a bigger penis than you, right? And he did, dude. He had a two-dick penis. It was wild, yeah. All right, I'm Dan. I love you. Thank you. There it is, Dan Pajatetsky. Am I saying that right? You did, yeah. You Pajatetsky. Did. Yes, yeah. All right. Well, welcome to the show, Dan. So how, wh- how, let's just uh, answer the question on everybody's mind. How big is your dick? Um, well, it's about one dick long, yeah. It's, um, <laughs> I have a one-dick penis. Thank you. Yeah, pretty good joke. I don't know. League average. League average. Probably the same as yours. Probably oh, yeah. not. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we found out recently Michael Lair saw your dick. Uh, oh, well, we don't need to bring it up. I don't like to brag about my obnoxiously long penis. It's ridiculous. No one needs It's not good for comedy. People like to think that their comedian has a nice, small, insecure dick, and that's right. how, what I, exactly what I want you Not guys the snow to believe. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was at your show at Vulcan the other night, and someone said you had little dick energy. I remember that. Oh, that's um, right, yeah. And you and you then, educated her. And then what happened to that lady afterwards? Was you her actually soul, tore her soul yeah, out. Yeah, her soul that. was yeah. taken from her. That's yeah. absolutely right. Just that's for the right. record, no one gets away with anything like that. Yeah. So Dan Piatetsky, uh, how long have you been doing stand-up? About four or five years, four and a half years. Four or five years, absolutely. Yeah. Hell yeah. And uh, all here in Austin, Texas? No, I've been in Chicago for two, New York for two, and then here. Awesome. What yeah. made you move to Austin? Seemed like right place at the right time. Ron White's <laughs> did, here. Did Ron, Ron White lives here. Ron you convinced know. you too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were on the phone, yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. It, it seems like the right place at the right time. Right, right. It's going to be like... 40 clubs here by this time next year. I Look don't at know. that. Like, Absolutely. No, fun. I completely agree with you. You're like a, one of those GameStop guys. You got in <laughs> while the getting was good. This yeah. is going to be a massive comedy hub. So, Dan, what else? What do you do for work? I work at a tech company. I do computer things. What do you do the on the computer? Uh, I work at a fitness app. I help women get into yoga classes. Basically. Okay. Yeah, they book yoga classes through the company. I okay. Yeah. How do you find these women? Well... <laughs> I do. I reach out one by one. Uh, I offer them the... Mm-hmm. No, it's, uh, it's just like... It's called product management. What I, I work with a team of engineers, and we, we make There's things. women just cracking yeah, up at yeah. you right now. They're, everyone's laughing. They're like, I you. love SoulCycle. This is hilarious. <laughs> I didn't even say What do you do fun. for fun, Dan? You seem like a little bit of a stiff to me, so I, I'm trying I, to figure well, out. Well, here's the thing. I'm feeling stiff right now. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I'm... Uh, Uh-oh. What? You're about to measure something. Is that uh, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. No, no, no. I uh, honestly, I've been doing comedy as my what else main other than th- comedy? Like there must be some outlet. Like you like to what shoot pigeons? I like I do. I cook a lot. I like to cook for big groups of people. I like having like people. What's over your and, big dish, or what? What's the thing that you yeah. really? My big dish. Uh, well, or rec- average size dish. Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh, I like making steak, man. I like. Uh, I made crab salad today during the day. Yeah. Oh, okay. The last yeah. guy that was on had crabs as well. Uh, yeah. Very interesting. This is a snoozer, isn't it? That's okay. Is a what? A snoozer. I don't know. Mm. Nah, I don't We're know. I don't We're know. Great. I'm really trying with you, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's partly on you, but. Uh, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. I, I love it. it. Can you tell us anything else about you? Cool. Over here, Dan. Let's not get yeah. distracted. Uh, oh, there's drums back there. Uh, <laughs> you're just really panicking right now for no reason. Everything's okay. No, you're good. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, so, Dan, uh, anything else, any fun facts about your life that we would be surprised to know about you? What makes uh, you special? I'm Russian. I, uh, my, I hang out with my grandpa. I spent... Part of the reason I'm being, you know, weirdo right now is I just spent like the last ten months hanging out with my grandpa. He's 93. So wow, wow. Yeah. And like, yeah. do you go out and stuff, and then come back? When, no, 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 no. Like I was living basically like for that. My goodness, what yeah. kind of Willy Wonka bullshit yeah, lifestyle was, well, are you yeah, living? You guys yeah. sleep head to feet <laughs> head together? Head to toe, yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah dog. you try like to sardines. find a golden ticket. Exactly. You, exactly. Have, you have to change his diaper or anything. Exactly. You have to do he anything? like he can't go. Like his doctor told him he's got to go on walks, and he can't even like leave his house. So like he just like walks around his house like a Roomba. I don't know. It's it's like. <laughs> He's he's bar- yeah he's barely alive. You don't <laughs> ever take him on a walk. You don't ever. No, him- he's got Parkinson's too, which sucks. Like because he loves soup. You so should, you should make him like a TikTok star or something. You should get some money out of him while yeah. you can. So bad at soup. Yeah. Have you measured his pillow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. That's a four and a half dick pillow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, Dan. Well, uh, like most Russians, it's hard to interview you. You, like, uh, <laughs> you, you really like keeping uh, secrets. So, but uh, fun times. You talked about your little dick a lot, so that's exciting. Sure did. Self-deprecating. Are, do you humor. actually have a, a a piece? You got a big yeah, one. Yeah, he does. No, we're not gonna. T- <laughs> I literally said well, I don't want to talk curious. about it. Michael sure. Laris says it looks like a little baby arm. Okay, uh, that's enough. Holding right. another baby you arm. You got a notable band. piece. <laughs> Red band, that's enough. I mean, we're just sitting on stage here and Stop you got a notable piece. Stop making fun of my giant dick. It's really <laughs> insulting. On, man. <laughs> All right, Dan. Fun times, dude. Way to do it. Four or five years. I can't wait till you're on again. Talk about something <laughs> okay. else. Thank you, Tony. And, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. We'll do it. There he goes. Dan Piatetsky, everybody. Everyone. He's on social media at Dan P. Comedy. Hell yeah. All right. Here's Zach Bogus. For those of you that love dudes with serial killer energy. You know, Tony, I found out something about Zach. He uh, used to work for two years as a general manager of an Alta makeup company. You know Alta? Wow. Makeup? No. He knows everything about makeup. Wow. Isn't that weird? Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. This looks like an interesting name. Lane Ruman. Lane Ruman is next on Kill Tony. Here he comes, right next to the stage. Very good. Uh, One more time for Lane Ruman, everybody. I I was watching football the other day, uh, at least a month ago, and uh, and I noticed that one of the punters was using one of those uh, playbook wristbands, and uh, I thought that was weird because you're on the field for like a minute the whole game. What could you possibly need to remember in a minute? Uh, I think my dog's addicted to mushrooms. Uh, I think he's paying my cat to knock him off the bookshelf. I'm pretty sure he's paying my cat. I don't know how my cat's getting all these sweaters. My cat doesn't have a job. And uh, my dog's done so many mushrooms that he started getting really philosophical. Uh, like he's teaching himself new tricks. And, uh, and he's getting really snobby about old tricks. Uh, like the other day I went shake, and he goes, you know there's a global pandemic right now, right? <laughs> All right. Lane Ruman. Absolutely. I, I, I didn't hear the cat. Did the cat go off? Yeah, it did. It okay, just, it right. just happened. Uh, Very I thought sad it was going to come sooner. <laughs> Four seconds after he thought it would, because he yeah. left space for laughter that didn't happen. Uh, yeah. No, I... <laughs> When I was practicing, I, I paused a lot more, and then I was told not to pause so much. Who told you that? And my girlfriend. I, I practiced. <laughs> she was I, right. You think she predicted how unfunny it was going to be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to need those pauses. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible stuff, Lane. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, roughly three weeks. Roughly three weeks. Okay, awesome. Well, congratulations. That takes yeah. some balls right there. Absolutely. That makes sense. That explains a lot. If you had said anything longer than three weeks, I was going to prescribe killing yourself. So, <laughs> very exciting. Did you start here? Were you on this yeah. show? Okay. I went up first uh, three weeks ago. Okay, awesome. Who was the guest for that one? Um, it was the... Uh, oh, boy. The two, the two Sarah Weinshank and Jamar Neighbors. Oh, okay. Very cool. How did that go? Would it go better than this? Yeah. Yeah, it did, did Yeah, it? it went a lot better. Is this only your second time performing? No, it was, uh, I did a couple open mics in cool. Houston. Cool. How did the open mics go for you? Uh, the first one went really well, and then the second one I bombed because I was getting heckled the whole time. Ooh, who was heckling you? Just some drunk girl. Damn. Did you? What did you say to her? Yeah. Did you try to get her That's back? Did felt. you? Did you respond to the heckles at all? Uh, I was I was pretty new at getting heckled, so I didn't know how to handle it. <laughs> right. You start making f- I, fun of her like appearance. It's really yeah. easy to fuck wow. up a girl. Wow. Red, red <laughs> Captain Obvious, uh, right. Doctor Redband yeah. here with. Oh, you should yeah. just make fun of them. Uh, if, wow. If, Comedy if, guru. Yeah. If they're Asian, <laughs> an Asian woman, make say her head's really big. Okay, Redband. Very weird. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're trying to stop Asian hate on this show. I don't know if you've been... uh, I don't know. I'm I'm just kidding. I love it. (laughs) As as a lot of people know, I'm just kidding. So you didn't say anything back to her? What was she yelling at you? Fuck you. You suck. Uh, Well, I was was making a joke about how how I... 
Talk uh, louder. Sorry. I, uh, I was making a joke about how I, how I look like I hate Jews. And, uh, and so she kept, she kept, like, she was walking, like, almost onto the stage saying, I'm Jewish. And, uh, and then, like... Why was, she, why was she coming to the... Did you drop a coin or something like that? Why was she... <laughs> what would make her walk to the stage like that? I, I, don't, I, I don't know why she... <laughs> We're trying to stop Jewish hate here on yeah. uh, Gil Tony. <laughs> I don't hate Jewish people. No, I just look like I do. No, you should have said, though, if she was like coming on the stage, I guess my observation was right or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. It, it really go. makes you understand <laughs> some of the right. stuff yeah. that's happening. The best. heckle master oh, Brian yeah, Redman, yeah. again, uh, giving more advice. You should have <laughs> uh, said something to her. Uh, <laughs> uh, so is this true? You have a dog and a cat? Uh, yeah, I have several dogs and several cats. Why do you have Ooh. several dogs and several cats? Uh, I feel like we went over this last time, but just... Yeah. Oh, let's do it again. Okay. Uh, you didn't even remember the show that you were on three weeks ago. Our, uh, well, I just couldn't remember the guest names. Okay. But, uh, Tell us uh, about your dogs and cats. Uh, yeah, I've got, um, I've got six dogs and uh, three cats. Uh, uh, I did say last time... Um, I misspoke. It, my my retarded cat has cerebral hypoplasia. Okay. Not hypo, I'm not glad palsy. that you corrected that for us. <laughs> we had a lot of listeners <laughs> contacting the Kill Tony hotline asking, what was the exact condition of the retarded cat on that episode with Lane Ruman? Well, palsy sounds a little worse than hypoplasia or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> cat cerebral palsy sounds worse than hyperplasia? Yeah, well, you know. Palsy's more recognized. Was the cat offended? Like, when you went home, was the cat like, Lane, sit down. We have to talk about this. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Red Band's impression of a retarded cat. No. <laughs> we actually have retarded cat sound effects, but I'm glad that you're doing... <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay. Lane, what's something about your life that we didn't talk about last time that you were on and uh, that we might find interesting? Have you thought about that in the past three weeks? Uh, well, something that happened in the last three weeks was mm-hmm. I got bit by a dog on my face. Was it one of your own dogs? No, it was at work. Where do you work? I'm a dog groomer. You're a dog groomer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and what made it bite your face? Didn't uh, like the haircut you gave it? No, it was uh, the, the owner didn't tell us that it bit, and, uh, and I was trying to pick it up. And, uh, and it leapt at my face. Wow. That's awesome. Did yeah. you lock lips with it or anything? Or anything? Uh, uh, for a minute. Wow. Mm-hmm. Was it a Jewish dog? Yeah, Okie dokie. <laughs> uh, really, uh, any second now this episode's going to start, uh, I promise. Um, pretty incredible. So that's fun. Lane, what's your girlfriend like? What does she do? Uh, she's also a dog groomer. Wow. Two dog Which groomers. Which we also discussed last time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okie dokie. Really, really fun stuff, Lane. Uh, interesting. Ron, you have anything else that you want to say about this guy? Absolutely not. I <laughs> thought the uh, I thought the set was tired, but two or three weeks, been doing it. You know, that's uh, if you, you only do stand up if you think it's fun. So if you think it's fun, just keep going to every open mic you can and uh, see if it doesn't just come around for you. There you go. I agree. Absolutely. I'm giving real advice. There it is. Three weeks into his career, there he goes. It's Lane Ruman, everyone. There he is. R U H M A N N on social media. Hell yeah. Ron has a great little doggy. Uh, is that your first dog you've ever had, or you have a little French bulldog? Oh no, mustard is. Um, I don't know. No, I've had 50 dogs. Yeah. So not at once, but I've had 50 dogs. <laughs> mustard's the shit. Yeah, yeah. mustard's a great dog. That's my he's favorite on that, dog. He's on the bus right outside. Oh, I love it. Okay, let's see what happens now. I have, a fe- I have a feeling things are about to pick up here a little bit. Make some noise for your next comedian, Travis Nathan Ray. Travis Nathan Ray, a three-word name. These are always very promising. Usually either a good comedian or a future serial killer. Travis Nathan Ray. Coming from the upstairs holding station here at Antone's on 5th Street (laughs) in Austin, Texas. Temperature, 68 degrees. Here we go. Make some noise for Travis Nathan Ray, everybody. People's lips are the same color as their genitals. I hate when people say that white people don't have any culture 
Like this one time, I overheard this girl say, I should have never got that dog. It's an Aquarius. <laughs> Didn't appropriate that from anybody. <laughs> I tried to teach myself how to wink my own butthole. You know, like the strippers do. But I ended up just farting on a mirror. <laughs> I really thought he would like that one more. I'm wearing skinny jeans for some reason. And there's like the seam up the middle, you know? Like when you go to sit down, if all your furniture like isn't in the same room, it makes your nuts make a decision. Like at first it wants to go to the left, and the last second it goes to the right. That's called rolling a nut. <laughs> Ladies don't have to worry about that. For y'all, it goes right up the middle. You have a lip on each side, but then it looks like someone tied a bandana too tight around the mouth of a ninja turtle. <laughs> Okie dokie, Travis Shut Nathan up. Ray, everybody. There he is. Absolutely. Always exciting when we have the top half of a centaur on the show. <laughs> Very fun. Welcome, Travis. Welcome, welcome. What's the name of your Leonard Skinner cover band that you're in? I'm in a blues guitar band. Oh, you are? So. Okay. You called it. All right. So, yeah, I'm not going to say the name. You, why, why not? What's the name? The Briars. Oh, okay. You guys play a lot locally? We play around Texas. Awesome. We used to. We weren't very good. You guys broke up? No, we just stopped getting gigs. What part of the band were you? I was lead guitar. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? About two years. Two years. Awesome. All of that here in Austin? Is this where you live? All College Station, like once a week in College Station. Okay. Driving out here for this. All right. Awesome. I got, I've been doing this 35 years. You want a little tip? Yes. Okay. Look at the crowd when you do it, right? You, just look, <laughs> you don't have to look at them. You can look above them, but it looks like to them that you're looking at them. And then sell it whether it sucks or not. So you you got a little lost a little confidence there at the end. You kind of squeaked out that last punchline while you were looking away. That's never going to work. Stare them down, deliver the line, and they'll fucking laugh. Or that's a great. The same thing's going to happen to you that happened to your band. That's <laughs> which is uh, that's that's great advice. That's the best comedy advice I heard since Red Band taught us all how to deal with hecklers uh, a few minutes ago. <laughs> But no, that's really good stuff. Travis, what do you do for work? You seem like an interesting guy. I am a network analyst. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Wow. So that's, like I was not expecting that. I thought for sure fucking pipe shop or something like that. No, there's a reason I pursue other things. Yeah. What type of, what, of what does that mean exactly, a network analyst? You're on computers all day? No, like all the digital signs you see menus and fast food places. Mm. When the prices aren't right, they call me. And, I'm and you make the price... Right. I make <laughs> <laughs> yep. I love it. What, you, what's your living situation? You live by yourself? I live with uh, my girlfriend okay. and her three kids. Oh, wow. Her uh, three kids. Mm -hmm. Damn. Lucky. How old are they? Uh, seven, 11, and 15. Seven, Do you have 15. a favorite? <laughs> the middle one. The middle one? Yeah. <laughs> Natalie. She's an artist. She's oh. awesome. Very cool. cool. The other two are kind of annoying. Which one do you hate? <laughs> Sorry, Victoria. What's that? Which one do you hate? The 15-year-old, right? <laughs> yeah, we all you know, know it. That. Yeah, the 15-year-old. That slutty 15-year-old, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I've never had to say, fuck you to a kid so much. Right. Do they ever give you the, you're not my real dad? They do that? No, and then you just say, fuck you. Wow. I'm going to my room. How about that? <laughs> hey, look at yeah. that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. You do that you on stage? Them. Well, it's a garage. I hide in the garage a lot. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to talk about that on but stage. You, but for I'm sure. saying, do yeah. you talk about? Is that part of your thing? Talking no. about how you live with your girlfriend with three kids, and I'm going to my room. No, like not that's yet. that's good. You see, like you said that, and it gets a big pop because then it's really about your life. Well, I tried to do like the quick joke thing. I don't know how to do the one minute my life. Yeah, joke. but it was a winking stripper butthole joke, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> I came, so I came. talking about your real life might be interesting. You know, it, yeah, it really. People can I, feel it, even though it sounds weird and unbelievable. People can feel when something's true and honest and that you're dealing with something. Although I honestly believe you've seen a stripper's butthole wink. Yeah. I was in the Air Force for eight years, so right. I've seen a lot of strippers wink their buttholes. It's How hard to do. I've tried it. How long have you been with... Uh, 
That's a talent. Okay. It just mine just oh. keeps open. Oh, you know. okay. There you go. You're still going with it. You're really chasing the dragon there. Anything else? You have any more tags for this winking stripper butthole no. thing you're doing? Okay. I'll keep it moving along then. How long have you been with this girl that has three uh, basically grown-up kids? I've been with her for two years. Two years. How, uh, how, I mean, like, what is it about her that you like so much that you would deal with three kids? I don't know. She's going to watch the show, so. <laughs> well, I'm at, luckily, I'm asking you what's good about her and not what's horrible about her. Like yeah, a, so if you can't come up with anything, that's what's going to look yeah. bad to her. She, she's, <laughs> nope. Come up with plenty of shit. She's awesome. She's beautiful. She loves doing acid. So, oh, oh. <laughs> there we go. That's great. <laughs> she likes to. That camp. makes us all very happy for that seven-year-old. <laughs> Where, where'd you meet her at? <laughs> Good question. So I, uh, it was my coworker's wife at the time. Ooh, uh, this is at your network analyst job, and you're like, this price job. is not matching up correctly. Uh, I'm gonna fix this right now. I've never written a joke about this shit ever, and then you're going to bring this up now. Like, it's time to start writing jokes about this shit. So um, I found out my wife cheated on me with like a whole... Wait, you were married. I was married. Found out my wife cheated on me with like a whole mess of dudes. <laughs> How did you find out? Uh, Tastes I w- different. <laughs> I Red band. When I ask a question, if you just let them answer, the show moves on. If you just say disgusting shit after every question, it gets like a little bit... Then I have to ask again. Go ahead. So I discovered, I was looking through my VA benefits <laughs> trying to get uh, disability for obvious reasons. And I found when you're overseas, if your wife goes to the hospital, they put it on your records. While I was in Iraq, she went to get a plan B pill. Oh. <laughs> How much was it, would you say? I'm going to guess thirty nine ninety nine. Hey. <laughs> bun, 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 yeah, she went to she she got the Plan B pill, and I went to confront her about her cheating, and she opened up to me about a different dude she cheated with, oh. not not the dude in the Plan B dude. No, oh my God, you're in Iraq dealing with IEDs, and she's here dealing with <laughs> IUDs. It's yeah. incredible. Again, that was, uh, that was that was another really brilliant joke. Really you, can't, joke. you can't make these things yeah, up. There's no one that has like you can't just have a prepare to be able to do an IED IUD joke like that. But so, I get it. There's a lot of initials there, a lot of math to be done on a Monday night. So I don't blame you guys for that one. So do you know like who the guys were like or like were they white guys or uh, well, a <laughs> really interesting question. Soda. Just well, Red Band wants to know if it's his worst nightmare as well. Uh, <laughs> no, actually it's funny that you would ask that because we were in Japan at the time and it was all Japanese dudes. What? <laughs> she cheated Cheated on you with Japanese dudes? My God, you must have like a four dick toothbrush or something like that. Or I'm not exactly sure how it works, but well, that, that's not really <laughs> cheating because it yeah, doesn't really a, go inside, right? By the it's, way, that's like the opposite of being cheated on by a black man. You come home, the apartment's cleaner, everything's nicer. Like it's like the I vagina's would, tighter than it was yeah, before. I would actually allow that. <laughs> I didn't say I was mad about it. <laughs> right. that, that is the only acceptable answer. Absolutely. My God. All Japanese guys. You guys were living in Japan while you were in Iraq? Yeah, we lived in Japan for like three years. I was only deployed to Iraq for a while out of Japan. Uh huh. And this came out. I was with her for 13 years. The final total, once she was telling me every story, the next story, the next story. Oh, it was, my it was, God. It was over 30 people. Oh my God, Jesus! Christ. All Japanese. Thirteen. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. We came back to the states, and uh, she landed she her going. some Americans wow. too. Oh. oh yeah. Okay. So she got some Americans on this uh, list of. Uh, so uh, to bring the story back, I found out yeah. about all the cheating. And you decided to fuck your buddy's wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> oh. Beautiful. <laughs> Did she make any money? Uh, oh wait, John D's with a question. I just, did she make any money? No, nah, man. I worked the whole time. She went to school. She never worked. Dang, oh my god! What, wow. what did she go to school for? Learning Japanese? <laughs> That's fuck. Thirty-three dudes. No, and no the real, sugar the real fucking answer of what t- she went to school for is way funnier. But it's to that? do hair. She went to do and hair. It cost us ten grand. 
because she didn't want to go to a regular hair school. She had to go to some other prestigious hair school. Wow. Guess what she does now? What? Not cut hair. Oh, my wow. God. Oh, my God. Yeah, what, what does she do? Let me guess. A hostess at a Japanese restaurant? <laughs> No, she works at a tire shop in a fucking small town. So. Wow. Well, wow. Uh, She's uh, finally uh, using rubbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that has to... Yeah, oh, there you are. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. That has to make you feel good, though. Like, fuck you. You work at a tire shop. Bro, yeah. my girlfriend's so hot right now. <laughs> Way hotter than her, so... Wow, that's great. Look at that. What an upgrade for you, huh? And let's be honest. If you, if you were stationed in Japan, uh, you went to that strip club that was next to the base, and you did those things with those strippers that... Uh, <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you, Red Band? <laughs> Did you, you, he knows exactly you, what I'm talking about. But Jesus. Talking about Red Band, can you jerk off before no, next I, Monday's I, episode, please? Like, just, you are like the, the, the I fucking... I know a stripper from Japan that worked there, and she told the me The one that does the banana show? Yes. <laughs> yep. What the fuck is happening right now? What type of pig festival am I in the middle of? You guys all know the same strippers? Uh, you would never forget her. She puts a banana inside of herself, pushes it out, and yep. then makes a marine eat it. Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. What, what were you hoping would happen? Uh, Hi, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> Entertainment? I don't know. My goodness gracious. Have you eaten the banana? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. I'll, I'll tell you this, Travis. Uh, fun stuff. Uh, I mean, and an unbelievable interview. You totally made up for the first three comedians' lack of uh, wanting to answer questions. This was incredible. And you've been prescribed some uh, really good doses. All this stuff that you talked about during the interview is infinitely funnier, realer. It feels like you. It's your real life. It's going to make you feel better about these things that have happened. And... Uh, you got to start really knocking it out because as you hear by the audience's responses, this stuff's really funny, man. Right on, man. I appreciate that. Hell yeah. How about a big hand for Travis Nathan Ray, Tra everyone? He's on social media at Travis Nathan Ray. You want to change it? Okay. Here we go. Time for a special treat. You guys like special treats? Where's the real Kill Tony fans at here, huh? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, your next comedian, one of the Kill Tony regulars from Los Angeles, California, famous for his incredible roasting abilities and great joke writing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the real deal, David Lucas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you should not be labeled a lesbian if you're fucked by a strap on. Like, scissoring is the only acceptable way to be a lesbian. <laughs> like, to me, lesbians and vegans are the same shit. Y'all both looking for replacements for real meat. <laughs> I'm convinced women that get fucked by strap-ons probably eat cauliflower wings, too. <laughs> like, bitch, just eat a real hot wing, you know what I'm saying? Like, stop playing with the fake meat, bitch. <laughs> I hate uh I hate internet dating, man. I hate internet dating because uh bitches be on there twerking in a profile picture, but in the description it'll say no hookups. <laughs> like what the fuck did you expect? A walk on the beach, bitch? I don't know what you wanted. Like to me that's greedy. Like you wanna show your ass off, but at the same time you want me to take you by a candlelight and kiss you under the moon. Oh, and I just wrote that joke. Fuck, man. Just fuck. I Hell yeah, David Lucas. <laughs> Doing real jokes, getting yeah. real laughs, acknowledging yeah. when a joke doesn't work, getting a laugh <laughs> right. off that. I love it. Yeah. Dude, that's real comedy there. Yeah, man. Absolutely. A yeah. real good 60-second set. David Lucas lives in Los Angeles but spends now two weeks out of every month in Austin, Texas. Yeah, man. I have my apartment here by May. Okay. Yeah. All right. Getting that's, a new apartment? Yeah, dog. I'm going to keep the spot, I'm gonna keep the spot in uh, L.A., though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm you I'm live a... that kind of life. That's how your uh, people like to spend money. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, how well, do you like to spend your money, Tony? What's that? How do you like to spend your money? The same way. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> 
I Tony's was born and raised in an all-black neighborhood, so right. I like to stay close to my roots. You know, Tony's what I mean? blacker than me. His first car was like a Crown Victoria. Like, that's actually that's actually true. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he yeah. had a Crown. My first car was a Honda Accord. Damn. Exactly. My God, that's so <laughs> Japanese. You could have fucked the last guy's wife. <laughs> 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 Welcome, David. Hi. Welcome back. It's always great to have you in town. Yeah, he was a sucker for that shit. Yeah. I would have beat that bitch ass. Really? My goodness. What would you do? You would just get her in the missionary position and just let your weight go? <laughs> <laughs> just, just smother. I you mean, be- you, you in Japan, you could have threw that bitch off a building and they would have thought it was suicide. <laughs> 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 David Lucas <laughs> is here. You're yeah. talking about online dating. Is that true? Do you really try that? You, are you on any of those sites or anything? Uh, trying to see who watched this show that I fuck with. Come on. I, yeah, I did some online dating. I spent the premium money. Cause you I look like you eat plenty of fish. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony has subscribed to plenty of dicks. <laughs> oh, come on. P.O.D. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Over here looking like Lil Nas XXXL. (laughs) Over here looking like Klondike Black. (laughs) Hey, Tony, I heard you was a silent investor in Grindr. (laughs) Well, actually, I wasn't that silent about it at all. Uh, Hell yeah, bro. No, I love it. That's your uh, also your favorite kind of sandwich, right? Yeah. You put them. You like you like to put them suits on so you can get naked real quick. <laughs> you just yeah. Unbutton it and pull it to your ankles. Yeah. At least my <laughs> pants can go to my ankles. Looks like they're gonna hit some real <laughs> some real real trouble there when those pants hit those swollen <laughs> kneecaps of yours. <laughs> Sorry, baby. Hold on a second. Let's just fuck with my pants halfway on. Uh, let's just do it. You keep your T-shirt on while you fuck, like you, when you swim? No, nigga, no. <laughs> girls that fuck with fat boys want the whole experience. They yeah. Don't, they, they be, girls be telling me, take that shit off. I'm Hell like, yeah. Oh, then do you take your bra off afterwards, too? Oh, no, God damn, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I always miss it when you go away for a couple of weeks. It's so much fun to have you, you back. So much, much, uh, hell yeah, bro. What else has been happening, David? It's been a couple uh, weeks since we've seen you. Let's see. That's about it, bro. Same old, same old. Waiting for L.A. to open up a little more. Texas wide ass open. I love this shit. You know. Hell yeah. Still doing the same shit. Eating barbecue. See them. Smoke house. Bowling acres. Still Mm -hmm. going there. Oh, that's right. I can't. I actually accidentally forgot to mention that. See, I'm best brisket in Austin. I might say best brisket in motherfucker. Uh, Which one? We, CM Smokehouse on Lamar. Yeah, I got to yeah. take you there. Ron introduced me to uh, the great Terry Blacks, my first meal here visiting. Uh, I was just visiting back in November to see, uh, see the I lay of the I fuck with Terry lane. Blacks, but... You Trust me, and it. yes. You think I, it's the other way. Huh? Yeah, man. I... T- I've I, ate at like eight, nine barbecue spots in Austin. And well, you're you're uh, you're you're really you're really good, man. You're really funny. What, what are you gonna do? Are you just waiting to for for LA to open so you can spend more time there, and you you're gonna focus on this uh, career doing stand up? And uh, I'm a I'm a com- I'm a stand up comedian career wise. Uh, I'm a door guy at the comedy store, so uh, it's just about having the balance because I've like what uh, I'm doing in Austin as well, because I got like uh, a show that I do at the Vulcan that's picking up pretty good. All right, good. And also, you know, a lot of big things coming to Austin that I want to be a part of. So, you know, it's nothing to fly back and forth. It's like $90. So to plant seeds over here and then still be in L.A. <laughs> I love the honesty there. You're absolutely <laughs> yeah. right. It's 90 bucks. You can't yeah. beat it. No, you can't beat it, bro. It's weird. It costs more to drive here. It's so weird. It makes no sense. Yeah, it really doesn't. Yeah, and sometimes like it's less. It. I saw JetBlue flights for $45 yeah, how, round, yeah. round trip. Don't get on that shit, bro. That's soul plane. No, JetBlue <laughs> is not one soul plane. That shit ghetto, bro. Jet, it is one not. Of the best. That shit not. one step above spirit, dog. No. It is no, <laughs> no way. You're totally wrong. No, you you must wrong. have been on one flight from like Atlanta to fucking <laughs> Detroit. <laughs> right. I don't fuck with JetBlue. <laughs> I'm, I went from Atlanta to Detroit. It was <laughs> like Soul Plane. I swear to God. Well, yeah. No, JetBlue's awesome. I, I, like I went to Zimbabwe the other day. You wouldn't believe how many black people were on the flight. <laughs> I feel like they're going to change it, though. They're like just getting us all used to it, and then now I know where they're going to be like, oh, it's $600 now for a round trip or well, something. Well, I will say JetBlue got the, the best Unfortunately, the, it's going to take a while for the economy to get back to where it was just a couple years ago when everybody was complaining about everything. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know, bro, we'll see, we'll see, man. You know, 
All right. But yeah, I'm an L.A. guy at the end of the day, Ron. I've been out there since I was 19. Oh, there. Yeah. Left my home in Georgia. That's right. Wow. How are your parents like doing? My mama cool. She uh, just got a new iPhone, so she don't call me no more. She only FaceTime. Okay. That's kind of annoying. Yeah. You know? But other than that, she chilling, bro. I don't know what my daddy doing. I ain't talked to him in like three weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know. That's, uh, you that's, know, though. Yeah, the no. rumor's true with black people. We don't, right. You don't, we don't got the best relationship with our fathers. Yeah. He doesn't want to FaceTime, right? No, I they, they I just he got turn on the speakerphone out in public so everyone else can hear it. <laughs> I think he got an Android on some real shit. I think he got an Android. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, uh, David, amazing set, thank as you, always. You, always thank so you, much fun. A real yeah. professional yeah. showing how 60 seconds is done. Yeah. There he is, the great David Lucas, everybody. He writes and performs a brand new minute every single week. What? <laughs> Stay in Texas. There you go. There's the head of Austin tourism right there in the middle of the room. Stay here, don't go home. The guy's got children back in Los Angeles, sir. Let him go see his kids every once in a while. All right. Okay. Corey Wolf. Corey Wolf is next on Kill Tony. How about a big hand for the band, everybody? Come Fuck on. Yeah. Out here just killing it. Who knows what can happen? Hopes and dreams on the line here at Kill Tony. A lot of people prepped months or years for this. Some people decided today that they would sign up. You never know what's going to happen. Corey Wolf on the way to the stage. Hey. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Female. Here she is, everybody. Come on. One more time for Corey Wolf, everybody. What's up, everybody? Some of you think I was a man. I get that a lot. <laughs> That's the 80s. Um, I blame that vampire movie with Corey Haim. Yeah. Anyway, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I just moved to Austin like four months ago. I'm feeling like a fucking character in a biblical movie almost. <laughs> or just a Bible. <laughs> what the fuck? I've seen, I've read the Bible. We all are. <laughs> but it's like I came out here on a whim and now I'm up here and I'm trying, you know, <laughs> I kind of knew I was going to get called because. I'm a woman, for one, and the way I signed the paper, I signed it on the bottom to make it so that they cut the thing bigger and the bigger ones sift to the top. So I cheat a little bit. <laughs> anyway. Actually incredible. You yeah. are actually right about that. There yeah. is an extra, like, I would say a quarter of an inch in width to that, as you see, compared to the average size uh, piece of paper. Very smart. Incredible that you would so strategically try to get selected on the show that, and prepare less than nothing for it. <laughs> I know. If, if you put I... half as much thought into what you were going to say if you got picked into getting picked. I yeah, did. what were you thinking? Um, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> what part of it worked? I, I, I don't know. I, like, I have this thing where I'm like, I don't gamble unless I'm going to win. But and I fucking did it. No, you made it I, to the casino, and then you lost. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Incredible. I, I've only clocked like 40 minutes of stage time so far. Okay. So, so you just started. How long have you been doing it for? 40 minutes. <laughs> oh, like, okay. Uh, oh like my month, goodness month, uh, March March okay yeah, so you March. started in March but we all know you Perfect famously timing. from uh, the hit show Daria yes you started and what made you start in March um I just got out of the house you just got out of the house yep heck yeah how many cats I, uh, do you have none I have three dogs and three dogs yeah okay you live by yourself no I live in a very competent house a very adults. what? Competent. Competent. I thought yes. you said competent. Me too. I'm like, oh, you live with yeah. a bunch of black people. That's cool. Wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, and yeah. I, I balance it out. What does that mean, a competent house? What does that mean to you? Um, it means they brush their teeth and they do dishes. 
Oh, good ideas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who are these people? I don't, I don't know I, what's I, I, happening tonight. This is a wild one. Yeah, are you on meth or something? Are you a meth? No, what's I, going I, I, drank a cup, I drank a cup of coffee. Oh. When I hadn't drank a cup of coffee in like a year, and now I'm like dissociating on stage. When did you drink this cup of coffee that has caused all this disruption with you tonight? Like 7.30. Like, it was terrible. 7.30 tonight? Yeah, and yeah, it's not cocaine, I swear. Austin. What made you do that? What made you decide to have a cup of coffee at 7.30? Um, I was going to go gamble. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right, what's your love life like? It, I'm single. Oh, we know, but what's yeah. your love life like? Oh, um, well, I've been proposed to seven times in my life. You've been proposed to seven times in your life? Yes. How? Why? What the fuck? Um, <laughs> seven uh, different I people or one person <laughs> asked you seven yeah, times? Yeah, it's the same no, guy, right? Same. One, one guy with a terrible stuttering problem <laughs> once one proposed guy asked to you. Me twice. Will you marry me? No. Go ahead. Explain to us how you've been you. proposed to seven times. Uh, well, I date people, and I'm like, I'm not going to marry you until we hit the five-year mark. And they, they like, ask me before, and they're like, her, her, will you marry me? And I'm like, not yet. And usually about year three, they, uh, they, I figure out that they're lying to me. <laughs> about what? Um, well, I remember one time I was talking to my boyfriend and he revealed to me that he didn't know what the sun was made out of. And I just like, did he, did he what guess? a what fucking you? nerd you are. What are you talking about? Is that what this is? You date like nerds, right? I know. I trade low lives, dude. Like what? Like, uh, been- like former meth addicts. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> How do you end up with these people? <laughs> They're funny. I mean, sometimes... They're funny? I, I don't know. I let the devil into my house, like I say. What do you do it's for fun. work? Um, well, they're not that funny. They're, I guess it's like... What do you like, do for a living? Um, I'm currently unemployed, and... Not, like, why am I going to quit that? It's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do for work before you were unemployed? Um, well, I... Work for Burning Man. I cannot get a fucking read on you yeah, for the I life know. of me. I, go, I keep going back and forth she, thinking you're a drug addict, she's thinking a drug you're addict. a nerd. She's a drug you're... addict for sure, right? Well, I mean, do you why, do drugs? that's why you're asking the question. Do you on do occasion? drugs? What kind of drugs do you do? Um, well, I can tell you what I haven't done. Why don't you tell us what you have done? Um, weed... Mushrooms, LSD, uh, 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 cops in the audience, uh, cocaine, (laughs) ecstasy. But there are I. I, So that's everything you need for stand-up comedy. So you're on the right track, I think. You know, cocaine's a bad one, and I. You got to use it as a tool, you know, because what dopamine does. Listen, what dopamine does it is it strengthens that pathway, in. Right. It of seems like it seems like you right use the, you do the cocaine. It seems so, like you use the cocaine when you're signing up and the heroin when you're performing. I know. Oh, I mean, it's, I mean, it's really tough. What do you like to do for fun? What's a big like other than uh, stand-up comedy since March? What's like a big outlet for you? What do you like uh, to wandering outside? Wandering <laughs> outside. Are 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 you a cat? Um, a little bit. I mean, I well, my last name is Wolf. So I kind of try and play that up a bit. Do you like peeling your skin off sometimes when you, the demons tell you? No. Mm. No, I'm over that. We made some peace. All you right. Know? Other than wandering outside, any other hobbies or anything uh, that we would find fascinating about you, Corey Wolf? Um, from Arizona. Let me ask you I, this. Uh, the main joke that you did in 60 seconds of uninterrupted <laughs> no. stage time tonight was, I just moved to Austin, oh, now me. I'm here. I know. Uh, in your other comedy sets, in the other 40 minutes that you've accumulated, Corey, can you give us an example of like a nice short joke that you've written that you didn't do here tonight? You have like oh. a, yeah. That, um, yeah, that comedy part of the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Austin is really interesting. Uh, it looks like you guys fucking took 
seven generations of Legos and just fucking mashed them all together. You got the Old West set, you got the corporate hell set all mashed in together, and I can tell you guys do a lot of cocaine here by the layout of the city. <laughs> all right. Uh, wow, this is... All right. This is a random audience. We have no idea who that man is. Uh, we've all never right, heard a voice booing. like that before. Can't believe a stranger in the audience would yell something like that. Um, uh, well, I, how, do you, I can't believe that guy doesn't love horribly guy, written Lego jokes. Uh, I think that's the guy that I like photobombed outside. Like they were taking a picture and they're like, where did Jones? And I gave him the Texas cross. So oh, here, boy. No. oh boy. Oh boy, Corey. <laughs> My goodness nah, gracious. All right, uh, all right Corey Wolf. Um, I'll tell you this. I mean, <laughs> through it all, I got to say, one of the funniest performances by a female stand up comedian we've ever seen in, in the history oh, of the show. Way better than Schumer, right? Anyway, there she goes. Corey Wolf, everybody. On to the next one. My goodness. Thank you. <laughs> Ron. <laughs> Ron, I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening here tonight. Uh, clearly, we have, a, we have a tunnel coming from a psychiatric ward. <laughs> it's a special field trip. It was a bus trip from... I think we should nail that door shut and <laughs> just yeah. open a new door. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty wild. But some people like it when episodes are off their... Uh, off the hinges. I kind of get it though. When you're listening to the audio, it, that 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 bad shit's actually entertaining. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Pulling get another a, name get a thin out. One. How about Ben Buck? This sounds like a real comedy name. Ben Buck. Hi, Ben Buck. Oh, look who it is over there. Uh, ben Buck is next on Kill Tony. Very fun stuff happening here. We have a couple more special treats coming right oh, around the corner here. We know this here guy. Here comes Ben Buck. Oh, look at this. This is the front door security guy. This is very exciting. Here at Antone's, everybody, the guy that let you in. Make some noise for Ben Buck. Chick, chick, chick. Knock, knock. <laughs> Clap your hands. From the front to the back, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Hey, hey! From the front to the back, where you at? Where you at? Hey, yeah! Out the top and they best stop it, break it down like a pop and lock it off and out so I got my spot, bumping the beat with the bubby boxes. Hey, getting a level lift to the edge you see, one of you better compete, glad on tracks and hit it so effortlessly. How y'all feeling? That was fucking amazing. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the more you know Ben, the funnier that actually is because he's one of the, the nicest people, uh, one of the most polite fucking guys. Very just quiet and does his job here at Antone's. He's been uh, working the door at every single episode here, and I certainly was not expecting that I was that not, whatsoever. yeah. That was fucking crazy. How long have you been doing, uh, how long have you been doing that for? All right. Well, I've been beatboxing for about like 10 years now. Awesome. So I'm 23, been doing it since 13, wow. professionally wow. since like 16. Wow, awesome. that's so cool. And uh, how can people find some of your work? Y'all can check me at Ben Buck Beatbox on all platforms and uh, Spotify as well. Wow, that is so cool. My goodness. What's a. Well, my God, do the ladies love beatboxing? Does that work out? Does beatbox lead to eatbox? <laughs> it's actually Ben Buck Eatbox on the weekends, shit. <laughs> what, what was that answer, Ben? It's Ben Buck Eatbox on the weekends. Okay. You, you, you have a girlfriend, or what's your move? What's yeah, your move? shout out Bailey. She's at home. Bambi? <laughs> yeah, Bambi. How about Damn, that? Damn, Bambi. <laughs> Oh dear! <laughs> All right. Okay. So, <laughs> so either you don't understand what's going on, or I don't understand what's yeah. going on. I thought this was the rap open mic. I'm so fucking confused. Like, <laughs> oh my god. I'm like, these other rappers suck. God damn. <laughs> Honest to God, you know what? Normally, I would say you didn't do any jokes, but I think the room needed a little fucking jolt of energy <laughs> there, and yeah, I think nice. I think you did it, dude. Oh shit. So cool. 
what else do you do, Ben? Tell us more about you. Well, my other favorite hobby is uh, ping pong. Does anyone here like to play ping pong? Let me see it. Oh, shit. All right, you want to play some ping pong? All right. Wow. Oh, my God. This is crazy. <laughs> Wow. wow. Jesus Christ. My mind is completely blown. How does he do it? <laughs> wow, Ben, that is so fucking cool, man. So do you perform shows? Like, do you do this, like, during shows? Like, yeah, this like was what I did before quarantine happened. Wow. But I had to pivot, get a real fucking job. Wow. You, do, you were doing live shows entirely as income. Yeah, for sure. Incredible. Do you have Thursday night off? Yes, I do. I would love to have, have you open up the show at Vulcan. Oh, man, I really appreciate that, man. Have thank you, thank wow, you. Wow, look at that. Ben Buck getting a little gig. And now that we know now that we know what he does, maybe every once in a while you can come up fucking, if we ever need a jolt of energy, I'll just oh, bring yeah, you man. up here and fucking yeah. shock the audience. <laughs> Hell yeah, thank you. I saw the band. I've never seen out of all the whatever we've done here, 10, 12, whatever episodes, I got I to gotta say... I looked over when you did went into the ping pong thing. I saw the excitement on John Deez's <laughs> face. It looks like it was Christmas morning over there. So cool. You actually got the band excited, which is fun to see. We can wait it, man. Shit. <laughs> I love it, Ben. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Blinded by the light. Uh, D Madness said he, he almost saw something. For those of you listening to the podcast, we don't have a mic for a... Uh, Deep madness to get but, one uh, for sure um so ben where'd you meet your girlfriend met her at the rap show actually south by two years ago very cool what does she do she works for apple she speaks french for canadian tech support damn it sounds like a weird bit but it's not Hell yeah. <laughs> no that's perfect and do you ever do any of your beatboxing tricks in the bedroom or anything like that i'll Is try it just echoes 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has a big vagina Oh shit. <laughs> Red band. I love it. <laughs> ben, so fucking cool, dude. Uh very, very interesting stuff. I've never thought beatboxing was so cool until you just did it. Shit, thank you. <laughs> Uh, is there? Uh, I already asked you where they can find your stuff, right? Yeah, you can find me anywhere at Ben Buck Beatbox. I have stickers at the front. Holler at me. Yeah, go get a sticker from Ben Buck on your way out. One more time for Ben, everybody. Very awesome stuff. Very cool. 23, is that right, Ben? 23 That's fucking awesome. years old. This guy's going to be a huge goddamn star. Yeah. I can't wait to watch you Thursday, man. That's he already awesome. is one half of Run the Jewels. Uh, not, the, not the half that you guys probably know. How cool is Actually, that? Actually, let's bring up the other half of Run the Jewels, right? You want to? Yeah, let's do that it. Like uh, this guy won the extremely rare prize in almost 500 episodes of this show. Only seven people ever have won a thing called the golden ticket, which means you have to have an absolutely perfect 60 seconds and an absolutely perfect interview. Last week, he reemerged for only the first time since winning the golden ticket in Iowa. There's only been seven people to do it. One in England, one in Australia, five in America. This is one of those guys. In his appearance last week, things went so off the fucking rails. It got so crazy in here that people are going to talk about it. Fans of the show are going to talk about it for years. This is his third time ever on the show. He's an anomaly. Let's see how it goes. Make some noise for the great. Allo mean, everybody. Hey, Austin, motherfucking Texas. I've been here for one week, and this is all I got to say. <laughs> you guys, I was uh, fat shamed the other day by myself. It was real passive aggressive the way it happened, too. See, I had been at the gym, and I was lifting at the gym, upper body day. So I was feeling real jacked. Chest, back, arms, shoulders, everything feeling real tight. You ever come from the gym, and you feel like you're the rock, but deep inside, you know you're more like the sponge? 
Anyway, I go home, take a shower, I get out of the shower, go to the mirror and wipe the steam off the mirror. Swipe, swipe. And that's where I fucked up that second swipe. Usually I just do one swipe. All I need to see is head and shoulders. Anything more than that will mess up what I go on inside for myself. You see, that second swipe happened and I stopped moving and my midi kept shaking. And it fucked me up. Now, if you don't know, a midi is a man titty. I've had them all my life. When I was a boy, they were biddies. But now they have hair on them, so they're middies. I don't want to talk about it. Hello, mean. Absolutely. Yeah. Talking about it. Getting it out. Welcome back, Allo. Hey, good to be here. Good to be here. Last week was crazy. Yeah, was the episode nice. hasn't come out yet. We've been, we have ep- a couple episodes banked because we did some road shows, so people don't even know exactly what happened. I don't really want to give anything away to this audience that might see that episode. And I don't want to scare anybody or frighten anyone. It's going to be but talked it's, about a lot, though, it's, probably. It's a, definitely a highlight in Kill Tony history. Um, long story short, uh, 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 yeah, 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 let's not. Let's not even do that. Allo, how's your week in Austin, Texas been? It's been crazy, man. No, wait. I want to find out what the fuck happened last week. <laughs> what happened last week was, um, so... Uh, Don, the great Donnell Rawlings was here, and Donnell famously um, housed David Lucas in a roast off. Uh, Donnell did his research on, when, on his first appearance on Kill Tony as a guest a couple of years ago, and he researched the show deeply, and he realized that David Lucas likes to make fun of the guest, um, and uh, Donnell decided to get ahead of it by making fun of David and not letting David talk. And since then, they've gone back and forth and whatnot. But Donnell specifically did not want to get roasted by David Lucas. And last week, David wasn't here, but Allo Mean was. And uh, Donnell made a single joke about <laughs> Allo Mean, something about his genes. And Allo decided to summon all of the gods and devils that have ever existed in the world. And, let, and, he, uh, and he made fun of Donnell until basically uh, Donnell left yeah. um, in the middle of the show. <laughs> he went to the bathroom and then uh, <laughs> yeah. the eternal bathroom of the exit door. It was, uh, I guess, everywhere's a bathroom out there, according to the homeless population. But pretty wild, Aloe. You are the first person in Kill Tony history to make a guest leave the show. Yeah, that was intense. I, w- I really wasn't planning on that. I didn't expect him to be here. I saw him walk on stage when the show started, and my mind just flipped into. If he comes at me, I got to be ready to come at him. And it was wild. Nope. He didn't overboard. have time to prepare. He did not know Donnell was going to be the guest. But when the moment hit, Allo absolutely went into uh, went into survival mode, and uh, it was pretty crazy. It was awesome. So Allo, um, what else has happened this week in Austin, Texas? That's interesting. A lot, a lot of hanging out over there by um, other spots. Vulcan. I went to David Lucas's fucking crazy ass show last night. Mm-hmm. That shit's dope. If y'all out here, check that out. Mm-hmm. Um, did you I see did, me there? Yeah, I saw you there. You walked right past me. That's okay. Oh. I was, I was wearing a mask though. I was wearing oh, a mask. Okay. And I didn't want to bother you about to get on stage, so I know how that goes. Awesome. No, I wish you would have at least said hi. But yeah, I yeah. probably should have. You also got to witness Thursday. Thursday uh, opened uh, up that show. Danny that Brown dope, almost man. beating up Steve Kern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was some crazy shit. Did you see me almost get attacked by a yeah, Chinese man? Yeah, I did. I saw, I saw him standing at the front of the stage fucking... Very wild. Like, uh, Thursday night, we did a show, and I was doing jokes about Chinese people. Just jokes. You know what I mean? No big deal. And, uh, and it turns out that I deeply offended a Chinese man, and he decided to come right up to the front of the stage and stand there staring at me like he was going to physically do something. Which, in turn, led me to uh, make fun of him and the Chinese people relentlessly, uh, thinking that he would eventually leave angrily. Uh, Minute after minute, he decided to stay there. I kept doing more Chinese jokes, and uh, he started to physically threaten me, at which point uh, the three security guards had to uh, escort him towards the exit, and I said, uh, that's what I call Chinese takeout. The rest is uh, the rest is. That was history. beautiful. He's I been <laughs> he's been tagging me on posts. Oh, really? On Instagram. Has he? Yeah. Funny thing is that he actually said that 
I was making fun of the killings at the spa that oh, happened. Which you were not. I never made a joke nope. about that. In retrospect, I sort of wish I did. I would have had I thought about it, but, uh, but I didn't. Um, but it's interesting how someone will lie in order to make their story seem Trying fitting to, to other people. Whatever. Right. Yeah. Wants to cancel me for a Chinese takeout joke that hurt his feelings. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say Chinese takeout three times in front of you, Allo, or you're going to have <laughs> no, a uh, going to no, have man. a blood sugar attack no, right man. now. So I you're mean, leaving tomorrow. Yeah, I'm uh, flying back tomorrow. Allo yeah. lives in Iowa, by the yeah, way. I know. If, yeah, I know. If I yeah. gave you a hundred guesses, you probably wouldn't guess that he lives <laughs> in Iowa. Yeah. Is then that's where you're born and raised? Yes, sir. Yeah, we grow out. We go black people out there and corn. There's a few. It's a small plot of black people, but we're out there though. Okay. Like, what do you? What do you? What did your parents do for work? Like, what did they do in Iowa? My dad. You, he did a lot of stuff that I probably, you know, I can't really mention. But oh, okay. my mom was a teacher for over. 25 years. Okay. All right. Your dad was like involved in some criminal, criminal he, affairs. He dabbled in a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know. You know okay. How it goes. I didn't see him too often, you know. Right. He was selling little baggies of corn or whatever. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you ever think about moving or are you just like, you know what, I was like, I've always dreamed about living in Iowa. Uh, <laughs> dreamed about Yeah, what, what, what's, the, what's the move? Because, uh, you know, appearances like, uh, especially like last week, you know, it had all of us really and what you did in Iowa, you know. So you think about getting out of there? I think eventually. I mean, this is a nice spot. If I did come somewhere, it seems like this is going to be the new spot to be. So, mm -hmm. yes, I think that's the plan. How many of you think Allo Means should move to Austin, Texas? There you go. That's Appreciate what I'm that. thinking. It's a little local Appreciate encouragement. That. Hey, I want to say something. Uh, yep. At the show Thursday, I did some nerdy shit. Uh, Ron White walked past me after he fucking destroyed, as Ron White does. And I just, I didn't know what to say to him. So I tapped him on, you probably don't remember. I tapped him on the shoulder and I'm like, hey, good set, man. <laughs> That's all I could come up with. <laughs> like we're at an open mic or some shit. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> and just kept walking. And so I'm glad I get to come here. Oh, man, I hope I wasn't shitty. Was I shitty? No, no, not at all. But that's the response I deserve for coming at you like, good set, man. That's all. I, I just tapped you. You were walking by. I was like, good set, man. That's awesome. I love. Did you remember that, Ron? No. That's a, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. <laughs> non alcoholic If I wouldn't have seen you now, I would have remembered that for the rest of my fucking life, though. If I wouldn't have seen you now, i get some redemption to so cool, man. No, thanks, man. Well, you just had a good set in front of them, a fun interview, fun times. Allo Mean, thanks for coming all the way from yeah. Iowa. Golden yeah. ticket winner, yeah. Allo Mean. Golden ticket for the seven people that have won it. That means they can, anytime they're ever in a city where a kill Tony is, they get to do a spot. So it's a pretty cool little, uh, little award. Very rarely given. Still never one given here in Austin, Texas. Not yet. Could be next. Could be the next name I pull out of the bucket. The odds are only like one in 2,000, but it could be. All right. Your next comedian goes by the name of Tim Warner. Tim Warner. That sort of sounds like a familiar name. We'll see what happens here. Everything is moving along smoothly. Yep. Yep. So, yep. Yep. There's only about, we only get through about uh, seven or eight, maybe on average, of these names. And that's always how it's been. It was more in at, at the comedy store. It used to be about 100 oh, we know this at guy. one point. Oh, yeah, this guy's back from last week. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Warner, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, so 2020, I kind of think was a war on hope. You know what I mean? Like, fucking, we had an election. How do you have any hope in that? You know, I kind of think like voting in this country is kind of like choosing between the best glory hole. You know what I mean? Like, no matter which one you choose, it's going to be frightening. Right? You stick your dick in the left hole or the right hole, they'll bite it off. Then what? You got a buddy in the background who's like, hey, why don't you stick it in the independent one? And you're like, I am, but nothing's happening. This seems like a complete fucking waste of time. Right? Everyone's so happy that fucking Biden's in. And it's just like, look, I understand Trump necessarily wasn't the president we needed, but he was the kind of the man we deserved. You know, we suck kind of collectively. 
and him sucking is not the fucking exception. We have been founded by scumbags. History is written by the winners, and now they write memes. There you go. A little bit of a deep cut. A little manifesto by Tim Warner. I thought he was going to pull out a gun and shoot all of us at the end of that. <laughs> Pretty exciting stuff. Such Stanhope energy with this. Yeah, you have him. a real, you're Thank a you. real uh, prof- prophetic type of uh, delivery. Yeah, I've been right a lot. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> uh, so, Tim, you were literally Fantastic. on last week. Oh, we have the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, on the line. What do you think about that set? I've been watching you for the last couple of weeks. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, do, you think, do you think you'll ever come on and uh, be a guest? It can happen. Wow. All right. That's very fun. What do you think about the, uh, what do you think about the job that uh, Joe Biden's doing right now? That is a huge problem. Oh, okay. Wow. It's a shame. You really got quiet there, Mr. President. You're not a nice person. You're right. I'm not. Okay. Anyway, uh, here we're back here with Tim Warner. Tim, last week we talked about a bunch of stuff about your life and this and that. What didn't we talk about? What's some interesting stuff about you that uh, we didn't find out? Oh, wow. Let's see. New York, homelessness. Um... For those of you that weren't here last week, I said that his barber is an Oompa Loompa. (laughs) Or no, one yes. of the mun- from Munchkin land. Yes, That's I'm a right. Nazi. I performed at the Capitol building on the day of the insurgent. Uh, what else are you going to do? I'll eight mile this shit and get the jokes out of the way no, of okay. all the stereotypes. It's that okay. Answer the question me. that I asked you. When, um, uh, I mean, I don't know. We didn't really. I mean, other than just like me traveling around uh, mm-hmm. after I escaped New York on election day and just. Mm-hmm. You know, I go to, like, AA meetings in the day, and then I do this shit at night, and the perspective during, you know, this medicinal martial law, uh, it's just been so fascinating, and it's been such a benefit to me because I just don't think there's a lot of, let alone people, let alone comics, that are really getting the perspectives and being able to at least formulate the premises that hopefully I can put some punchlines on. Okay. You know? How long have you been sober, Tim? Oh, uh, jeez. Now it's uh, 607, 607 days. 607 yeah. days. Good yeah. for you, buddy. Uh, yeah, thank you. When thank you, you go to these AA meetings during yes. the day, is there like yeah. a, do you have like a killer story? That, I, I know AA meetings, they tell great stories about like how they ended up in the... I, you know. I don't... Here's the thing. I don't want to dwell... I don't want to put my energy on a past that wasn't successful, where I was a loser. So I tend to dwell on now... And then hopefully what I could do in the future. You know, like the idea that like gratitude is an action word. So it's like... Gratitude? Gratitude. Oh, gratitude. That was a very uh, silent G on that. Yeah, it's... uh, Sorry. It's it's an action word. And like being the best version of you is saying thank you to the universe. You know what I mean? Like this this is a fucking gift. And like being in New York, especially this past fucking year, you know, it's like you're not even guaranteed the next fucking hour. You know, and then it's like going to places where, you know, like New York, you can't fucking do this. They they, they banned fun. And like to go to places where you can have fun and watch people take it for granted. um, I don't know. It's kind of a beautiful thing to watch and also heartbreaking. You know, wow! It's um, it's one of the least funny answers yeah, we've I ever know. gotten Sorry. in the history of the show. Sorry, I got real for a second. <laughs> I just started thinking of all my boys back home and shit. That back just, in like, New York. You know, you, you get busted doing a show outside by cops fucking. Right. And if the governor catches you, he's going to grab your breasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they gave him the fucking Clinton role mm. in all of this. But he's a fucking, they're all scumbags. All right, Tim. Well, you got up last week. You got up again tonight. Yeah, We're man. just going to speed through it. It was so okay. much fun to have you back. Definitely a different type of style. Uh, Ron White, what do you think about Tim Warner? Uh, great stage presence, and that's always a great place to start. So you got that going for you. I could understand every fucking thing you said. I just didn't understand why you said it. <laughs> Perfect. Tim uh, Warner is online at I am Tim Warner. All one word. There he goes, Tim Warner, everybody. All right. All right. We're doing it. We're getting through it. What do we do? We started 10 minutes late, right? Let's go back to the bucket again. Let's see what happens here. We had a couple quick ones that we went through. We're coming around the mountaintop here. Zach Bogus, a little bit of extra sanitizer on that one this time, huh? <laughs> Just kidding. Kidding, Tim. Okay. Let's see what happens next. 
Hunter Stower. Hunter Stower. Okay. Here comes Hunter, I do believe. A very confident walk. That might be Hunter. Could be Hunter. And it's not Hunter. There goes That was state. L. Cool J. A yeah. random human being g- getting through security. Zach Bogus just watching him walk by him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just letting him up into the green room. Very interesting. Okay, here comes Hunter Stower. Hell yeah. Guys, make some noise for your comedian, Hunter Stower. All right, let's get it out of the way immediately. I look like Shaggy and Velma had a kid. Yeah. I can jankies and zoinks. I can solve the mystery, but only the mystery who, who smoked my weed. It was me. It was me. I do smoke a lot of weed. I smoke weed at a competitive level, you know? Like, if there was an Olympic category for weed smoking, I would definitely forget to qualify for that shit, you know? Yeah. I'm way more productive when I have weed, too, because when I don't, I spend a lot of time looking for weed, and that... <laughs> that's counterproductive. I have a really stressful job. Anybody else? Yeah, mine's super exploitative. I can't really talk about it. It rhymes with cumin trafficking. <laughs> All right, I think I have time for one more. Uh, when I was a little kid, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I was a little kid, my parents told me that my dog left to go live on a farm because they were protecting me from the truth that she crashed a Boeing 757 into the Pentagon. Hashtag 9-11 was an inside dog job. Thank you. Okay, Hunter Stower. Welcome to the show, Hunter. Uh, Hi, good to hell be here. Yeah. Hell yeah. Did you propose to the girl that was on uh, er- earlier in tonight's episode? You ever proposed? Wait, the, the one... Corey Wolf ring a bell to you? I met her out here. I'm actually married, though. Oh, you're married? I am married, oh, yeah. Okay, how long have yeah. you been married for? About two and a half years. Oh, cool. Yeah, That's thank awesome. You. What does she do? Uh, I'm a single family household, single income household right now. Okay, what do you do? Uh, I'm a human trafficker. <laughs> like the joke. Okay, well, what do you really do? No, I'm, I'm, I do recruiting and immigration, so I am a human trafficker. It's just like my people want to be trafficked. What exactly are you talking about? <laughs> like, imagine you're you... really like reaching for a joke, and we just want to no, know. No, no, the... it's real. Like, I'm a recruit. I told you, I do recruiting and immigration. You want a job? You I recruit find you a job. people that want to somebody, come to America. Somebody's in Mexico. They want to be like a business systems analyst, like an industrial engineer. What do you mean? I they do. just walk up. No, I can help them get a visa. I know how to do immigration work. Did these people ever That's hit great. you up? There's 100,000 people a day that just walk over the border that, uh, that don't even... Uh... They tend to not have industrial engineering degrees. Oh, I they, see. They're the smart ones. They're the ones that we want. They're the, the, they're the ones that Trump wanted, all right? I'm so confused. I'm really You not. just wait till somebody comes across with a briefcase and you talk to them? Is that... <laughs> Yeah, it's actually how I met my wife. <laughs> she had a briefcase. Yeah, she was the one with the briefcase. Yeah, it was love at first sight. I love oh, she's it. She's from Colombia, so yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, Colombian women are beautiful, right? Not a flex, right? just a fact, yeah. Yeah, she's probably way too good looking for you, right? She is, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I look like Does Colombian your wife have a juicy stunning. butt? Um, yes. By American standards, absolutely. Sure. But right. by Medellin, Colombia standards, she's like... Like a seven and a half. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm that's be good. Honest with that's you. good on Colombian standards. Red Band also has a uh, seven and a half size oh, ass yeah. on Colombian <laughs> standards. <laughs> I kill it in Colombia. Hunter, how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Four years. Four years. I like it. You have charisma. I didn't really get the Boeing 757 joke. It's just 9-11 was an inside dog job. I really like saying that. Okay. Yeah. It works sometimes. What do you like to do for fun, Hunter? You seem like a guy that has some real hobbies. I just do this and I rock climb. That's it. You climb rocks. I climb rocks. Yeah. Boulder. Ever been bouldering? All right. There's a gym. There's like several gyms. Anybody boulder? All right. I'm a fucking weirdo, I guess. Yeah. It's just, it's you guys? No? Okay. I like it. You have a... Uh, what scares you? What are your biggest fears? Do you have any weird fears? Are you afraid of anything? Cancer. Okay. Do you think you have it a lot? All the time. Like, every single time I have, like, a burp or I get, like, any kind of indigestion, it's, like, straight where my mind goes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of with you on that. Yeah, I deal yeah. with that 100%. Lot, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I've been dealing with... Not, not enough to stop smoking splits or anything like that, but, you know. Ever since I had the coronavirus back in December, the uh, 
lingering symptom, which I had sometimes before, uh, but now I have it almost every night, is night sweats. Oh, yeah? You ever have night sweats? I guess. I mean, I had it. I was asymptomatic. I, I don't know. I figured... I just maybe was a sweaty dude. That normally happens, though, if you drink a lot of alcohol, though. I do drink a lot of alcohol at night, yeah. so that's probably where it is. What kind of alcohol do you like Whiskey to drink? Whiskey Cokes. Whiskey and Maker's Cokes. Maker's Mark and Coca-Cola brand loyalty. Uh, yeah. Okay. You ever, you ever try uh, number one tequila or fixed high alkaline vodka? No. Well, Are you, you should. offering me some? You should. Okay. I'll, I'll go get some. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Right after this, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Where, where do you do your stand-up? You've been doing it four years. Where do you, you Oh open yeah, so here in I, town moved, I moved here in August. Uh, I started doing it in the Bay Area. Okay. Like Oakland, San Francisco. Is that where you, you lived there for a while? Or? For like, since like 2011, and then I just took advantage of COVID to become remote for my work, and I moved here permanently. When did you move here exactly? August. Oh, cool. Yeah. We actually met on New Year's Eve. Oh, kick? I do remember you. That yeah. was so cool. You offered me mushrooms. I did offer you mushrooms. Yeah, I remember you now. <laughs> yeah, how's... you were sitting underneath. He was sitting like underneath the table, and uh, he really was. And he's like, "Hey, man, if you want some mushrooms, I'm like, I'm actually good right now." I was getting pretty lit. It was a, a good long night. drive. It was like uh, it was like 40 minutes north of here or something, right? Fredericksburg. It was the Barrel and Amp Show. That was Fredericksburg. Yeah, the Barrels and Amp show, right? Georgetown, Georgetown. Georgetown, yeah. They, they sound the same to me. I was just in Fredericksburg for the I'm first Louisiana time. My buddy, sorry, uh, right. my buddy Kyle took us to a ranch. I got to shoot guns, and uh, I actually cut down, uh, used a chainsaw for the first time in my life. Thank you very much. Grew four chest hairs that day. For those of you <laughs> counting how many chest hairs Tony has, I'm up to nine. Wow, nine. Yeah. I love it. Uh, you do mushrooms a lot? Yeah, I did mushrooms yesterday. Not today, though. Just, But, I mean, I just forgot, you know? <laughs> That's fun. That's fun, Hunter. Uh, what do you think about Hunter, Mr. Ron White? Uh, you know, I like it. You see, it needs a lot of uh, stage time, but it looks like, uh, you know, you got something to say. And uh, uh, Are you going you're, you're gonna to stay here in Austin? Cause Fuck there's, yes. You yeah, know, I, yeah. All these guys just need a bunch of stage time, you know? Just find a place to get on stage and stay on stage. And, that, and Austin's going to be a great place for that in the future. Yep. Uh, I don't know why everybody runs out there and wants to be the door guy at fucking the comedy store mm -hmm. when the work is all in the Midwest. You can come out here and be an opening act, do 10 shows a week. We're out there, you know, you do one show up. So I, I think yeah. it's a good spot for you, man. I, I encourage you. Appreciate it. There, you, yeah. there you go. There Absolutely. You, go. you have, uh, you got it. You heard it from the man himself. It's Ron. an honor, by the way. There it is. Hunter Stower, everybody. Yeah, S-T-O-E-H-R on social media. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Should we go to the bucket one more time? Yeah. Guys, I don't know. That wasn't very convincing. Should we go to the bucket one more time? Yeah. There we go. There we go. Let's see what happens here. That is true. So many people want to be the door guy at the comedy store, and they really do. Like, it, like two minutes here, two minutes there. When right. they could be like the funny bone in Columbus, Ohio, and get like five nights a week, you yeah, know, right. it's, it's crazy. Well, there's two schools of thought on it, right? It depends on their work ethic. Like, if your work ethic and your, it's just a different thing. If you want to get better, I would say, if we're talking comedy science here, I would say if you want to get better at hanging, right? Networking, uh, looking for opportunities. If you want to study the art form more, if, if you're at the comedy store, you can do that. If you yourself want to get better and get stage time, yes, being on the road could be good, but there could also be competition there. It goes both ways. I think every year it changes. Like, And you can also get a lot of spots in L.A., but I agree with Ron. Right now, Austin's the place to be. Over, definitely over Columbus, Ohio. But a lot of people, yeah, it just depends on the person. It's weird. And when that person gets to the comedy store. Anyway, who knows? Let's see what happens here. Your final comedian out of the bucket tonight is going to go by the name of Philip Garcia. And then, yeah, and also, if you get stage time where you're from, and then you go to the comedy store and become a door guy, then you sort of have, like, everything, right? No. <laughs> no, you skip the whole fucking door thing. 
You go out in the Midwest, do middle and comedy clubs, doing a half hour a night, seven nights a fucking week, sharpen the blade till somebody gives a fuck in California, and you go out there and skip that whole goddamn doorknob thing. Absolutely. You know? yeah, absolutely. What'd you do? All right, well. It's brainwashed. Yeah. Because I got a career from working the door at the comedy. Oh, it's Philip Garcia, everybody. My dog just died, everybody. Yeah, every, uh, every family dog that's ever died, we've made sure to bury in the backyard. Anyone else? Yeah, I don't see a problem with that. Well, yeah, but we've been renters our entire lives. <laughs> it's been leaving a slew of dead dogs in every house we've ever lived in. <laughs> We're like a family of like three boys, too, so there's going to be like two goldfish, a turtle, and a Boston Terrier in some backyard in Austin, Texas. An archaeologist is going to be digging that shit up and be like, what the fuck happened here? Oh, no. Lone Star Beer just came out with the 24-7 brew. It's 2.2% alcohol. Yeah. So you can enjoy the shitty taste of Lone Star all day now. What the fuck? <laughs> Can't help but to wonder how many stepkids are getting beat half as hard, though, you know? <laughs> but twice as long, are we solving anything? <laughs> how much are water bills and trailer parks going through the fucking roof, you know? <laughs> all right. Two birds, I'm stoned. I've been Philip Garcia. I feel like that's, yeah, there we go. Wow. What a performance. Nice. Unbelievable. Oh that my was awesome. God. Perhaps one of my favorite sets that I've seen here in Austin, Texas. Yeah, that was you. incredible. Even D Manis and the band agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> D Manis said even he sees greatness in you, Philip. Thank you. Uh, incredible. How long have you been doing stand up? I've been doing stand up three years, about like two weeks ago, too. Yeah. Three, so you hit your three-year mark two weeks three ago. Three years, yeah. All you, it, actually, last time I was on, you told me to uh, break up with my girlfriend of three years because love wasn't real. I was 23. <laughs> Is this true? How long yeah, ago was that? I was in Dallas. We were in Dallas Highness. And, uh, I, this was like three <laughs> years ago? No, this was a year ago. Okay. Almost. And you told me, you asked me how hot she was, and I said eight out of ten. And when, she, uh, when we broke up, she's like, I couldn't believe you would rate women on a numerical scale. I told her, I was like, that's kind of bringing you down to a six right now. <laughs> So and then you told me to write more, and I have been. So uh, I've been on my shit for you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> How did it go a year ago? I'm sorry, but like those Dallas shows get crazy. Sometimes I can't yeah, remember everybody. Like three in a week, and it's pretty jam-packed. You get lucky. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it went, that one went great, too. I did a Amber Alert bit, which is I've never seen a car newer than 2010. I think you like that one, too. Yeah. And I said, you ever seen a really old veteran with a really old Asian woman? And wondered if he took her. <laughs> <That's what laughs> you got fucking jokes, bro. <laughs> yeah. Thank this you. is like this is usually how the <laughs> this show starts is with yeah. people doing jokes. Very rarely is it uh, in the very very end do we have <laughs> pull someone out of the bucket it. that actually uh, did something other than figure <laughs> out how to get their piece of paper larger than other people. <laughs> very awesome, Philip. Well, she said that I was in the bottom right of the first sheet, and I saw that big ass fat form get peeled. I was like, maybe this bitch is up to something right now. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah. yeah you yeah. really so, saw that? That's so yeah. cool. Yeah, we upstairs watching, so we're having a good time. That up is there. awesome, man. Oh, yeah. So, Philip, uh, what do you do for work? Uh, man, uh, I used to do comedy. It was just, I was living at my mom's and I was attainable. Uh, but now I'm doing pest control because the pandemic. I hate digging through rat shit, but I'm just getting out every night and still trying to go up and That's do my cool. thing, you know? Yeah, yeah I got to do what I got to do. At least so. it's a day job so you can get out at night. Yeah, for sure. Pest control seems like one of those things that I just simply, no matter what, <laughs> and I bust tables and bag groceries. I did fucking every miserable job yeah. when I was growing up and uh but pest control seems like one of those things that must be rough huh just smells fucking disgusting yeah, yeah. 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 you just have bad. to go to the most disgusting people's houses yeah and they wonder why they they have bugs i'm like it's because you keep having watermelons and leaving them around the house as decoration <laughs> like this is this is bug hawaii like other bugs are saving up to come here with their families lady <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what to fucking tell these people you know Holy Pretty shit. Do you have a horror story? Do you have something that's just completely yeah, out of control? Yeah, what's the worst pest thing? Any bed bugs. Like, any oh, bed yeah. bug story is like, I go home and I tell my girlfriend, like, hey, let's just uh, burn these in the chimney tonight <laughs> and not have to worry about it. That's why I was really impressed by the beatboxer, but then his name was Bedbug, and I was like, ah, sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell other people to listen, but I just can't because of flashbacks. It was but. Ben Buck. It ben was Buck? I'm ben, back in. Ben yeah. Buck. <laughs> Fuck you're yeah. Bed bugs. You're, just, yeah. You're, just having, you're just having flashbacks to bed bugs over here. Yeah. I, I can't believe... Man, I, 
Ron White, dude. I'm sorry, man. I, I grew up listening to Blue Collar Comedy Tour. It was like the first digestible comedy I listened to. It was just... Sorry, I've, well, watch, I feel like well, a loser well, listening. Wa- well, watch this. Watch what he's about to say to you right now. <laughs> Incredible. What do you think about that performance, Ron? Yeah, uh, how old are you? I'm 24. 24. I didn't start doing stand-up until I was 29. <laughs> so your light years are where I was at uh, 24 when I was just smoking pot, watching cartoons. <laughs> so I would encourage you to go with this full blast, man. You got really good punchlines, and uh, it's Thank really you. interesting. You made uh, the three of us laugh out loud. And, uh, Fuck yeah. <laughs> and that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. So congratulations for that. Oh, and and uh, thank you so much. Yeah, hey, I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> and Philip, I don't think I've ever done this before, but I would also love to have you on the Thursday show if you can do it at Vulcan. Of course, yes. Yeah. Thank you. And you know what? I'm actually doing a Tony Hinchcliffe and his current friends on April 17th at Vulcan. You're going to be in town April 17th? I can be from Dallas would you for do, sure, yeah. Would you do a spot on my show as 100%. well? 100%. I'd love that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you well, so then much. you'll do a spot there as well. <laughs> Thank you. And also, uh, I'm doing ACL Live in December, and uh, <laughs> I just wanted you to know I was doing it. It's no big deal. I just... Uh, uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Philip. have you been signing up every week for this show? Uh, this is actually the first week I came down to Austin to get on. Oh, you I, live in Dallas. I live in Fort Worth, yeah. Okay. Is, yeah. Okay. Y'all are all from Fort Worth. No? Is that what is it? No? Okay. Wrong book. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, well how, about, uh, how, about you, uh, how about you come back in a month? You let me know, message me on something, okay. tell me that I, uh, you know, y- <laughs> get my attention, say you promised me or something like that. And, okay. <laughs> uh, and instead of just uh, signing up, we'll give you an automatic minute. I'd love to see another minute. Every single For joke sure. you do kills. Thank you. I appreciate it. So let's it. just do it. That's basically yeah. everything that we could give you. Got you. It was April 2nd and April 17th, right? Yep. Gotcha. It's Thursday, 8 o'clock, Vulcan. Gotcha. There you go. Great, this guys. guy just Thank got you. three gigs from doing one appearance on Kill Tony. Come on, make some noise for Philip Garcia, everybody, huh? Man, that's, that's what exciting. happens. That's what happens if you do fucking jokes on a show about jokes. Fucking Th- love things it. can happen for you. We like people that do good at comedy, believe it or not. <laughs> even, All right. his, even his comebacks, even him just talking, yeah. back fucking kills. Jokes, quick fire jokes. Philip Garcia is on social media at Philip with two L's. Philip G414. All one word. Follow that guy. 24 years old. I guarantee you he's going to be big. He already is. All right. This is the final comedian of the night, ladies and gentlemen. You want one more special treat, huh? This guy, a regular on the show, now lives here in Austin, Texas. High-level black belt, Second City master improviser. Once he got diagnosed with ALS, became a stand-up comedian, knocked it off his bucket list. We fell in love with him, made him a regular immediately. Now he has the tough task of writing and performing a brand new minute every single week on this show. Everybody else you saw tonight has been preparing for months and this and that. This guy has to do it every week, and he does it every week. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the great, the powerful Michael Lehrer, everyone. Here we go. This is how you close a show here in Austin, Texas. Thunder and lightning. (laughs) Guys, make some fucking noise for Michael Lehrer. Yeah. I'm a man. I 
Okay, Michael Lair, everybody. Uh, all right. For those of you that missed last week, uh, we found out that Michael Lair has been on a three-week cocaine bender, and uh, it appears as if though the effects are really starting to show. Um, Michael, uh, what's up? <laughs> um, I'm dying quickly in the town that most right than any other town I've ever lived in. He's dying quickly in a town that's the most ratchet than any other town he's ever lived in. Right. That's right. Right, like, I am, I live a corner mile away from this menu, and I try to take my hand. And it was like Indiana Jones and the last cocaine. <laughs> okay, Michael. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It was Indiana Jones and the last cocaine? Is that what he said? Yeah. yeah. He lives a quarter mile from here. He t- drove here in his wheelchair, and it was like Indiana Jones and the last cocaine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> when we understand it, it's quite incredible what uh, comes out, what, what he, what's going on in that brain of his. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'm losing the ability to use my arms. And I'm like, I get up here every week and I give it my own. But a lot of people think that means I'm getting better. When I'm not. So, fuck you <laughs> There you go. Absolutely. There's a little button on that one right there, huh? <laughs> yeah, ALS yeah. is a uh, tremendous disease, but just to let people know, I don't force Michael to do this. He wants to do it. Uh, for those of you wondering, he says that this is the highlight of his life and that he loves doing it every no, single week. No, we're person. <laughs> When me and Tony and Redman were in Miami. When we went to Miami. Yeah. <laughs> and um, on the last day after five shows, I was burned out. And Tony's like, how are you? You sound worse than you do. After the show, I'm like, give me that motherfucking microphone. <laughs> and he goes, yo, I can give it, and I can take it. I go, no doubt. And I'm getting sick enough where after KT500, I don't know how many shows I am left, but Austin, I love you, and you're rushing this one, <laughs> and I've never been to a city so fucked up as Austin. Let me, let me know. It is true. Your disease has progressed a thousand miles an hour since moving to Austin, Texas. Yeah. Um, you know, we're in the central uh, multiple party districts, and I would like to call all Mars and clubs on 16th. The staff infection. Ah. <laughs> Some good fucking local humor right there. No, no. But, um, I'm having the time of my life. Too much, obviously. But. <laughs> Don't make- 
make that sad face. Oh, he's looking at his notes. I thought he was looking down sad. <laughs> Yo. Hey. I know I feel you're knowing my minute. And my life is a nightmare. <laughs> like, no, I'm not fucking around anymore. Like, I get family and friends who are like, oh, you're traveling, you're doing these cool shows. But 99% of my life is a fucking nightmare. And I don't know how much I've left to give me all, but I will do it until I can't do it anymore. There you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I would like to say this. We're dealing with a vaccine shortage. I, crazy enough, have soon not got it, but I, I make rules for people who should not get the vaccine. And I live on rainy stream. And if you ever pre-order a hamburger, on Randy Stream from the internet to line up with 200 people the next day for that hamburger, you do not get the vaccine. <laughs> Michael Lair, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, doing it. Doing it. Can we improvise? What? Can we improvise? You want to improvise something? Yeah. What do you want to improvise? Anyone with anything. Anyone with anything. Yes, my will, huh? Okay. Ron White, will you improvise with me? He wants to improvise with you, Ron? Sure. Hell yeah. So I'll what? Some more, yeah. What's the scene? Let's get a... Suggestion from my ear. Let's get a suggestion from the audience here. Anything uh, anything you guys want to... Travel to the moon. Travel to the moon. Uh, yeah. Hey, Ron. <laughs> really cool accommodations in the moon. Am I right? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's one of the nicest Airbnbs on the moon, and I'm glad you could make right. it out here. I How did you get up here today? Well, I'm as surprised as you, because I have a 2.7 rating on Airbnb. <laughs> like, literally every Airbnb I've ever taken now, I've turned into a a brothel. <laughs> well, you know, I love brothels and I love rental units. Right. So I think you and I could do some business sometime up here in the moon. No doubt. I think we could spread your brand up to the moon. No doubt. No, Ron, I heard you tell this story one time. And correct me if I'm wrong. You're a legend. And, but, um, you, um, Served in the military, correct? Yes, I did. And wasn't it through documentaries decades later that you realized that the blowjobs you were getting were from lady boys? <laughs> I think about 150 men sucked my dick while I was in Hawaii. If that's, if that's the story that you're getting to, I think it was about 150. I don't, I don't know what the record is, but I know that I was, I was right on up there. 
Philippines is a weird place. <laughs> Yo, know, I shame my head so I can lie about having cancer too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm dying really fucking fast. I don't know because I've I've actually watched your condition improve over the last ten minutes. So uh, it's actually pretty wild. You're you're actually the only person tonight that I've watched get healthier as their set went on. So it's pretty ironic that you're the one dying. Michael, we absolutely fucking love you. We're gonna end tonight's episode. How about a perform? How about the improvisation talents? of Michael Lair and Ron White. MichaelLairComedy.com for everything Michael Lair. He's got a bunch of really cool stuff there. Guys, how loud can this place get for the great Ron White, huh? Come on! Come on! Tony Hinchliffe, everybody! Thank you, Ron. Thank you. And make some noise for the band, everybody. The Fix Vodka. High Alkaline Vodka Band. John Dees is on social media. Follow him at John Keys, J-O-N-K-E-Y-Z. Matt Muling is at mutation at M U E H T A T I O N. And Michael Gonzalez is at Mike A. Gons 13. D Madness, ladies and gentlemen. D, you have any shows this week? Thursday night? At Sam 1? Sam's Town Point, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, go see D Madness, play some music. Michael, uh, Michael and John, Matt, any gigs this week that you want to plug or anything? Check in with the great Ryan J.E. Belt. See tonight's drawing with Ron White. Oh, my God. Ron, check this out. Ryan, zoom in on uh, that Ron part. Look how fucking cool. This guy drew this during this episode. That's the guy that used to draw every episode in L.A. He's still I look in- like Moses. <laughs> well, I got bad news for you, Ron. Uh, you look like Moses. <laughs> 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 Moses is a badass motherfucker, though. Look, I love that picture. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, all those prints are available at RyanJEBelt.com, and uh, that's another one. How about one more time for Michael Lehrer over here? He's uh, hey. oh, he just gave you guys the slowly finger. flicking everybody <laughs> off, <laughs> very slowly, and it hurts more when it's slow like that. It's really like he does it like he says it. Fuck uh, you. you. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Every Monday has been absolutely insane. Thank you guys. Good night, everybody. Yeah.